When you think of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, what do you think of first? Maybe you think of the battles, maybe hitting a cool spike, maybe you think of your favorite character, but there's something that you do every single time you play the game. In fact, you do it so much that at this point you don't even think about it, and that thing is moving. But what if you just couldn't move? That begs the question, is it possible to beat Super Smash Bros. Ultimate without moving? Now I know what you're thinking, how's this going to work? Because essentially for this challenge we can't use the joystick, which means the only attack moves we can use are neutral air and jab, but we can expand that move list with the C stick. Now most people have their C stick set to smash attacks or tilt, so I feel like not too many people use specials on the C stick, but for this challenge it's very useful. It lets us use our recovery move without using the joystick, and if a character has a side special that moves them horizontally, then it gives us a very good movement and recovery option. It also helps because almost every character has a side special that turns them in the direction that you move the C stick, which in a challenge where you can't move to turn around is our only option to face the other way. And I say almost every character because every single character in the whole game can turn around using their side special except for Terry due to his back special. This makes it impossible for him to turn around unless the other fighter goes to his opposite side and Terry's auto turn kicks in, which is not very reliable, and if it's a free for all, forget about it. The only way that Terry can reliably turn around is rolling using the C stick, which goes for all characters as well, but I think that using rolls as a movement option is very lame and diminishes the purpose of having a character with the good side special, so I'm not allowed to use rolls as a movement option and very rarely will I use it to actually dodge an attack, although it is allowed. To be honest though, almost every time I did it, it was an incorrect input. Now where were we? Oh yeah, right, Terry's useless. The last thing to note is that we actually can use more attack moves than neutral air and jab because we can also use forward smash by pressing B and A at the same time. Yeah, don't worry, I also forgot that you could do this until I started making this video. This isn't too useful because most smash attacks in the game have a pretty short range, and it's of course hard to get in close without moving. Early on, we will be using this quite a lot though, and I'll show you why soon. So now let's finally start this challenge by creating a new user so we have no spirits. Obviously, we're playing on hard mode because we're not scared of anything, except for everyone getting consumed by the light. We're scared of that. Alright, let's fast forward to where Kirby is the only one to make it out because of course he does. I mean, he can punch through an entire planet. Like, what? So you might be saying, what about the hub world? Don't you need to move with the left stick here? And the answer is yes. Well, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, okay. So yeah, you have to move the stick to move on the hub world, but we're just not gonna worry about that because this doesn't really happen during gameplay. Gameplay being the actual fights. The hub world is just a way to get from point A to point B, so I'm not gonna count it, and the same goes for menus. Now let's really start the challenge with the first fight being Smoky Prog. Here's where we need to use our smash attack because Kirby's side special doesn't move us forward, it can only make us turn around. Luckily, Kirby's forward smash actually makes him go forward, so that's our main form of movement. The big problem with this fight, or rather with Kirby, sorry Kirby, is that if we get knocked off stage farther than 10 inches, then Kirby's stubby little nub hands can't grab the ledge, and there's no way to move horizontally in the air as Kirby. We don't really have a good way around this problem, problem other than just not getting knocked off stage. So just repeatedly use F smash, turn with side B, spam up B, use down B if he's below you, maybe inhale Mario and get his fireballs, be careful not to get hit, and eventually we'll win. The strategies remain the same for the Eevee fight, and now we have a primary spirit to make us stronger and use our Smoky Prog support spirit which gives us a spiky urchin. Fun. After beating Mario, we unlock him and he isn't too bad, but he's also not too great. His up B moves him slightly horizontal, which is good, but what's bad is that besides his F smash, Mario kinda sucks at killing anyone. This fight with the Guardian is somewhat difficult, but as long as you make good use of your shield and F smashes, you should beat it. But it doesn't really matter how good Mario or Kirby are, because after we beat an unlocked villager, we are absolutely never going to use either of them again, because the big problem we saw with both of those characters is that if they get knocked off stage even just a little bit, they aren't coming back. 
With Villager, we don't have to worry about that though, seeing as his side special is a rocket that we can ride for as far of a distance as we would need. His up B is great because it goes super high and if we flick a direction on the C stick then we'll fly horizontally that way. Villager has alright kill power, mainly with his side B which is more powerful while Villager is still riding on it. His down B can also help, even though it takes a little while to set up the tree and it dies about 20 seconds later. His F smash is kinda terrible because of its practically non non-existent range, although it does feel good to drop that bowling ball like an anvil in a cartoon right on someone's head. So with Villager, we're smooth sailing for quite a while, equipping and leveling up better spirits when we get them, gaining new abilities in the skill tree, and defeating whatever spirits stand in our way. Once we unlock the spirit Pico, we gain the ability to drive the wild goose from F-Zero. After defeating some mildly challenging spirits, we get to the fight with Captain Falcon, and this, this is the character that we're going to use for 90% percent of the game, and here's why. Captain Falcon is perfect for this challenge in every way but one. His side B moves him in the direction you flick, which gets you close to your opponent and does a good amount of damage. His up B moves diagonally a reasonable distance and is a great kill move at around 100%. Side B also combos into up B pretty nicely. His neutral air is good, his jab gets the job done, and Falcon Punch is great for punishing shield breaks or to use on bosses. But where Falcon really excels over Villager is his down B. It moves you a great distance and has a lot of power. The best thing about it though is that he can use it in the air, which makes him fall to the ground very fast and makes it so that if fighters are under you, they'll get hit. Without using the left stick, we can't fast fall, so if a fighter is under us, they can just keep hitting us, but with Falcon Kick, you don't have that problem. The only bad thing is that Falcon Side B doesn't go super far, it's not horrible though. His kill power usually makes up for that and makes him better than Villager in most instances. So it's really just about using our judgment to see if Falcon or Villager would be better for this particular fight. The battles going forward are getting more difficult though, like this Flygon, which took many attempts to beat. But now after beating Boom Boom, we can level him up and enhance him into Boom Boom and Pom Pom, which is our first Ace Rake spirit. With this spirit, the battles become somewhat easier and we can fight through the Molten Fortress one spirit at a time until we get to the big man himself, Giga Bowser. This fight is difficult. Really difficult. Using Captain Falcon in this fight is the only viable option because of his Falcon Kick. If we try to use Villager, then basically every time we're above Mr. Giga, we're gonna get hit. Our best strategy is to jump to dodge most attacks and then Falcon Kick or Punch. Shielding is good for some attacks, but for others it will break our shield. If our shield gets broken, then we have to mash out like this because we can't use the left stick, which to be honest, kinda hurts. Our biggest problem is this one stupid attack where Bowser moves his spikes up and hits us. The right way to dodge this is to either shield or air dodge but for all the other attacks, the best action is to jump, so we have to have a good reaction time, either to the sparkle on his spike telling us that he'll use that move, or to air dodge it. So then it seems like shielding is a great thing to do, except it's not, because like I said before, some moves break our shield, and again, having that reaction time is a very hard thing to have. I was determined to win, but I just kept dying, and dying, and dying, and oh yeah, did I mention dying? At this point, almost two hours had gone by and I gave up and left. I left to get snacks and spirits to turn into cores so that I could upgrade this Groudon into a Primal Groudon, which is better than Boom Boom and Pom Pom. I also fought and unlocked a lot of different characters. Not because I wanted to play as them, but because they gave a lot of skill spheres, which I used to get useful skill tree upgrades like special move power up, and most importantly, shield durability up. This will stop our shield from breaking from most of Giga Bowser's attacks, so going back into this fight, I wasn't just physically stronger, but I also felt more confident, and I knew that I could win. And there we go, I did it, I beat Giga Bowser. It was still difficult, don't get me wrong, but beating it made me feel really good. It made me feel like I couldn't be stopped, and that statement could not be any truer after infiltrating the base and getting to Gallium fairly easily. I thought Gallium might be hard to beat until I realized that I could just use Fox's laser and hit Gallium from across the map. 
This is also the only time we'll use Fox in this challenge, so say hi to Fox and say bye to Fox. Also, if this video gets 50 likes, I'll see if it's possible to beat the Dr. Wily fight without moving. After beating Gallium, I went to the power plant to get the great Zapfish spirit that makes you giant, which will really help us a lot with our upcoming battles in the Temple of Light, which we need to complete to get rid of the light emanating from this crack in the floor. After going over the bridge and through the maze to Shine Sprite's house we go, this battle is extremely challenging. At first, Rosalina has invincibility, which of course is not ideal, and on top of that, there are three very angry Kirby's seeking blood. I was about to call it quits until I randomly decided to play as Pac-Man, who isn't horrible, but Captain Falcon is just much better. I accidentally side-beat off the edge, and I was dead. I'd just use up B hoping that one of them would knock me back on stage. But to my amazement, Rosalina's brain just stopped functioning. She fell off, used neutral air twice, and died. I was shocked, but as they say, we take those, and the reward is very useful because it gives us extra special power damage, which for a challenge where we're using 95% specials, that is just what we need. From there, we can get this Lapras so that we can ride on it to take us to this island that takes us to the Forest Hill area. And I'm not just being lazy by calling it that, because that's its official name. I mean, I get that it's based on the Monster Hunter's Forest and Hills area, which is actually also really lazy. I mean, in Breath of the Wild, there are no places that are just called Grassy Plains. I mean, why can you call this place something like Rathalos's Hill, other than the fact that it's hard to say Rathalos's? Speaking of Rathalos, Chasing Him puts the Benny Hill theme song in my head. I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's been like four years since I've played World of Light, so I kind of forget forgot how to do the puzzles, which is pretty annoying to watch back, like what am I even doing here? With the Rathalos fight, at first glance it looks pretty difficult. His most potent attack is when he spits out three fireballs and you have to falcon kick out of the way, which isn't always easy. His movement and attack seem pretty unpredictable, but as long as you make sure to move when it's safe, correctly time your attacks, and use the items that drop to your advantage, you can do it. Moving straight through the space area, we have to fight Master Hand. His attacks do a lot of damage, but they're fairly easy to dodge, so if we remain calm, we can defeat the Five-Fingered Menace with little to no scratches. After that, we find ourselves face to face- wait, is that even Galeem's face? It doesn't matter. We find ourselves face to face with Galeem, and this fight? is hard. His attacks do a lot of damage and are hard to dodge, and if you're trying to attack him with an aerial side B and he warps away, you're dead, and it hurts your soul to be honest. But the challenge doesn't come from his first phase too much, it's his second phase where all of the attacks are devastating. The first is this orb attack, which if you get hit by really any of the first six or so orbs, you're basically screwed because Falcon side B doesn't go far enough to get you back on stage. So you may be saying to use Villager, but he just just doesn't have the raw power that we need to defeat Galeem. The other annoying move is where he spawns light clones of fighters that come to beat you up and knock you into other attacks, and then they blow up. Every single time I lost to this boss, it felt like a gut punch. I mean, I was so confident, just like the second time fighting Giga Bowser, but I also felt cocky this time. And now while I'm leaving again to get stronger, I feel defeated. But the only place to go from here is up, right? <laughs> Well, at least I'm still a little bit hopeful. Well, I guess I should show some of the highlights from my long expedition. So first I beat up a child and was rewarded with many skill spheres, and then I decided to attack my first legend rank primary spirit, the boss. It's a difficult fight, but I was starting to get the hang of it, using a mixture of falcon kick and the combo of raptor boost into falcon dive. This time I really felt like I could do it, and then she fell off. I didn't even hit her once. The spirit is fairly good and is the best spirit we currently have and should help with defeating some of the even stronger legend rank spirits. The next battle I did was Pauline, and I didn't think I could complete this one because Peach, who is the one we need to defeat, just constantly runs away and we're too slow to catch her. And then Mario comes and slaps us, and then when Donkey Kong comes, we're just basically dead. I decided to look online what the Pauline spirit even does for you, and when I did that, it also showed a Reddit post asking how to beat it, with one Redditor saying a super easy way to complete it. The way to complete it is by equipping a spirit with a staff and sniping Peach from the other side of the map, which works like a charm. So thanks guy on reddit from six years ago. This spirit heals you every time you shield an attack which will help us a lot later down the line. After I did that I was just going around the map gathering up whatever I can and I stumbled upon Ricky's spirit fight which unlocks his dojo. 
To be honest, I just wanted to do the fight because the first time I played World of Light, I still hadn't played Xenoblade Chronicles, which you should definitely play because it's amazing. And so I wanted to see what the fight was like, but I was happily surprised when his dojo raised special attack power. It also lowered attack power, but we use way more specials anyways. We're almost never in range to grab, and I could really care less about item attack. So we'll teach all of our good primary spirits the Riki Do Wei, and any more good spirits we find in our adventure we'll also put here. From there I unlocked all of the shop areas because they sell bundles of 5 skill spheres and buying these should help expedite the process of filling out the skill tree. Next I went to World Tour and defeated M. Bison, which was actually really easy to do and he's our strongest spirit yet, so now I feel like it was time to go back to fight Galeen once again. But now, I didn't feel confident or cocky, I felt weary and afraid, but there's no way to know if we can win unless we try. Well, I beat it. Hooray. So now that we've defeated the Light Lord, we think all is well, but now that there is no light, darkness consumes, and we have a new enemy to fight, for we must bring balance to the Force, and destroy the darkness as well. From this point on, there's nothing really to say about the regular spirit fights. Like, they're all difficult, don't get me wrong, and sometimes we get new stronger spirits, but they're nothing really to write home about. There are only really two that are really good and I'd like to tell you about, so I'll talk about those when we cross that bridge. But for now, we fight Crazy Hand, who isn't really that hard once you figure out his attack patterns. Next, we run through Dracula's castle to fight Dracula, who was really easy and I beat him in two attempts. After fighting Crazy Hand again, I went to defeat Ganon next, and this boss is more so annoying for us than it is hard, because you have to get to the tail of Ganon to deal any damage. So either you have to jump over his head, or Falcon kick through him, and then after all that, he might just run away before you hit him, which is infuriating. But after a few painstaking minutes of chasing Ganon down and dodging any attacks, you can win. After we beat Crazy Hand for a third time, the last area in the Dark Realm is the Mysterious Dimension, which has your video game knowledge and trivia tested. I got everything right except for not knowing who the King of Twilight was because I haven't played Twilight Princess. So here's one of the two very strong spirits I was talking about. It's Medusa, who is only an advanced rank spirit, but after enhancing it, it becomes Uprising Medusa, which is one of the best, if not the best, primary spirit in the game. It turns you giant without equipping a support spirit, and you still have two slots for support spirits left. So we'll be using her in this fight, the Marks fight. He has a lot of different moves that are challenging to dodge, like this black hole move that is hard to run away from without either Falcon kicking off the edge or getting sucked up. Luckily for us, Marks just doesn't have enough raw power to defeat us though, with his attacks only dealing about 10 to 25 damage, so we can get out of the fight unscathed. Now that we've defeated the three bosses of the Dark Realm, it's time to go against Darkon. Going into this fight, I feel confident, but also cautious, and that, my friends, is called character development. Darkon's super difficult, and after getting my butt kicked for a while, I went into my spirit list to see if any spirits could help me. That's when I remembered Pauline existed, and her ability to heal you when you shield, combined with the healing from perfect shielding, which is an upgrade that we got from the skill tree, we can do some serious damage to Darkon and still have a lot of health. Making sure to dodge his attacks, punish when he's vulnerable, and just playing well, it's possible to defeat the darkness. It took me just under two hours, but we did it, and that's all that matters. With the Dark Lord weekend, the struggle between light and dark rages on, and so our quest to bring balance is not yet complete, and thus, into the final battle area we go which is again its official name. Just like the Dark Realm, the spirit battles are hard, but aren't remarkable except for the Wedding Peach Spirit, which is the other spirit I wanted to mention. She heals 50% when you exceed 100%. It's debatable if she's better than Pauline, but I'd say that I'd rather have a guaranteed 50% healed than a chance of more health healed than that. After that, you have to fight Master Hand, twice. He isn't that difficult though, except for these dumb blue balls, like stop that out. Hey, at least it's not Crazy Hand and oh, yep, yep, yeah, of course you have to fight him twice too. I don't know why they made you fight Master Hand and Crazy Hand so many times. Like the second time I fought Crazy Hand, it was already getting kinda boring, but now I fought him five times. 
Oh, whatever. Now that we've defeated Master Hand and Crazy Hand, they're on our side. So all we have to do is defeat an equal number of Light and Dark Spirits so that we can walk in the balance to this crack that the hands can shatter open and enter. Now we're playing as Master Hand, and his attacks make beating this pretty easy and fun. Except for the fact that every time I slap, I move forward. And then I slam down, and now I'm below the stage. But it's not a terrible spot to be in, because we can still spike the light and dark clones into the blast zone. And if I want to get back on stage, I can just slap forward, and then spin straight through the stage, and open fire, and slap the clones till there are no more. With that out of the way, the final battle starts now. For this battle, we get to use three different fighters. I picked Villager and Captain Falcon for obvious reasons, and for the third pick, I chose Pit. His side special is just as good as Raptor Boost, and you can even use Up B after you use it, which is super helpful. So this final battle has three sections. The first section is a platformer like those good old Super Mario Brothers. I thought it would be good to use Villager for this section since his Up B and Side B are perfect for this. His tree also helps with defeating all the Light and Dark clones. Timber! Here's Johnny! The only part where he struggles is when Galeem and Darkon come out from the sides and hurl their razor sharp limbs at you. You have to attack the bosses to drive them away, but with Villager's attack power, it can be difficult. It isn't too big of a deal though, because if Villager gets knocked out, we can just continue as Pit or Falcon. Although something all characters are bad at dealing with is this attack, because we're too slow to get out of the way. The good thing is that it doesn't happen too much, so we can just power through it, use the jetpack, dodge the bob bombs, get to the top, and defeat the clones. The second section is a boss rush. Say that ten times fast. I obviously won't explain each boss since I already did that, but I'll give you the order that I used the characters in. First was Captain Falcon, Pit, and then Villager. And I didn't even need to use Villager to beat it. The order I fought the bosses was Ganon, Giga Bowser, Dracula, Gallium, Rathalos, and finally Marx. I also healed with Pauline's healing shield in between the battles that didn't give you a heart container. Now that we've completed that, we're on to the third and final section, the moment we've all been waiting for. The battle between Galeem and Darkon. This is a battle where we're gonna want to use Wedding Peach because I think that she'll help us better than Pauline. I figured out while I was playing this that I just couldn't use Captain Falcon for this fight. The fighter who has helped us for a majority of the time can't help us here because of his recovery. Mainly because of this move from Galeem, and yes I know that this move was in the previous Galeem fight, but he could only use it in his second phase. In this fight he can use it much earlier, and it's too hard to reliably avoid. I thank you for your hours of service, Captain Falcon. Retire easy and fly high. As for his replacement, it's Dark Pit. I mean, he's basically the same as Pit. I really just have Pit on my team twice now. Most of their attacks are the same, but they do have some new ones like this wavy thing, which is pretty easy to dodge without getting too much percent. There's also the skewer move, which I only sometimes mess up my air dodge and get hit by. Going into the battle, I was really only scared about one new move, which is this, where you have to air dodge these rings that come at you. I was scared about it because even in a normal playthrough, this is hard for me to dodge. The new move that was actually almost impossible to dodge was this move, which I forgot even existed. Galeem pretty much sends a homing bomb at you, and then the only way to avoid it is to let it hit the ground or to go up so high that the bomb despawns. It's really hard to run from though because we can't run, so almost every time that thing comes out, I know I'm most likely screwed. For example, I had an amazing run going. Both of them were at close to the same health, so I could defeat them both near the same time. I had just defeated Darkon and I was ready to end Galeem's rain as well. He had just a little sliver of health left. I was at high percent, but I was right there. I had him in my mitts, and that's when I saw it. I knew that I wouldn't make it out of this. I started freaking out. I hoped that my rocket would do enough damage, but it was like the game was going in slow motion. The bomb went off, and I died. I was so close to beating him. I stopped for a minute to think and reflect on what just happened, but I realized that I wasn't going to let this be what crushes me, no. Instead, this would be what fuels me. I had a taste of blood, and now it's time to finish the job.
It was an epic fight, a battle for the ages. But not only did I survive, but I thrived because I didn't even need to use Villager to acquire the win. With both Light and Dark vanquished, there was nothing left but peace and balance. Thus, our quest was finished and we can say that it is possible to be Super Smash Bros Ultimate without moving. I want to thank you for sticking around to the end to see the conclusion to this challenge. It was a lot of fun to play through and I encourage you to try the challenge for yourself. Just make sure not to play too long because I played for almost 39 and a half hours in the span of six days, which is more than an average of six and a half hours a day of gameplay. So yeah, don't do that. Make sure to take it slow. I guess this is a good time to say that in the description of this video, you can watch the full un cut 39 hour playthrough if you really wanted to do that. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and of course, FALCON PUNCH!